a nice jiggle, because, you know, I put the extra. So, is this you know, a Texas thing? I mean, it is. Yeah. Very early on, you know, third grade, we, we take Texas history and uh, how to make your milkshake bring all the boys to the yard. Uh, and so, you know, I am very comfortable with saying really weird stuff in front of people I don't know. So, um, you're welcome. All right. All right, so my uh, background, you know, when I was a little kid, I used to make goofy radio shows with my buddy who lived down the street. And we would, you know, on little cassette recorders, record ourselves, you know, being DJs and, and doing like fake call-ins and doing commercials and stuff. And then when I was a teenager, I started acting, started doing theater, and I went to NYU, I have a degree in acting from there. And uh, I, my career sort of veered off when I was in college as I started playing music and getting in bands, and that's what I wanted to do. I'm like, forget about acting, I'm gonna be a rock star, because that's like a wise career choice. And, uh, you know, and actually I was lucky enough to do that for a couple of years, like just play music, and that's what I did. And, but then, you know, the band split up and I had to get a job and in a roundabout way, I ended up getting hired at Central Park Media, who was an anime distributor, uh, because I had learned recording technology and stuff through all my music. Uh, I was hired as a producer and I started directing. And then I started doing little voices and things, but I couldn't really full force get into it because it would have been a conflict of interest as a producer and director for that particular company. But I went on my own um, in 2004 and had my own company. And then when I was a free agent, immediately, I started getting calls from all these studios and, and right away four kids came in and, and scooped me up and had me start directing for them and I then like got cast in almost all of their shows and all these studios that I had worked with around the city for like the last four years before that who I had sent work to now I had good relationships with these guys and I told them listen I'm out there as an actor now I'd love to come in and read for you uh, because we had good relationships it didn't get me parts it got me auditions, and I had to go in and earn the parts, and that's why I was looking for. I was looking for handouts, but I'm like, well, give me a shot, and if I'm good, then cast me. And it worked out, and I've been doing it very consistently ever since, and I love it. Um, so where your sister takes credit for your career, I basically give credit to my sister for my career. Uh, my sister Tracy's a year older than me, so really tight, and she got bit by the theater bug in like elementary school. She started taking it a little bit more seriously early on in high school, and I was basically following her footsteps. There was an agency that approached both of us and kind of asked if we wanted to join their agency, so that's when I started getting sent out on auditions for like movies and TV shows and commercials and things. And that led to my first audition for a cartoon series, which came out of nowhere, and it was a show called My Little Ponytails. And, <laughs> and I got it. And it kind of went from there, you know, shortly thereafter I had my first audition for an anime series, which was Ronmo One Half, and I got that one too, and it's just kind of gone from there. I've, I've since cut out the on-camera stuff, because I never really liked it. Loved being on set, but hated the whole audition process. But um, with the, the animation end of things and the voiceover end of things, I love it too much. I love everything about it, even the audition process and everything else. So I can continue to do it as long as I can get little pockets of work here and there. It's good enough for me. Okay, mine goes all the way back to 1975. I was 14 years old, and one night, my voice went from like this to like this. And, and so I got a job in radio broadcasting, and so I was the, the celebrity impersonator and, and character voice uh, for a lot of morning shows across the country. And I land in San Diego, and as it turns out, one of the top casting directors at the time, back in the 90s, Lonnie Manella from Audio Gods, uh, comes into my studio to record a, uh, a, a car commercial for a local San Diego dealer. And she starts doing her crazy voices because she can't speak in her own voice. She's a bit weird. Um, and so I start doing voices back at her. She goes, wow, uh, you've got really good range. H how about uh, voice acting for video games? I said, there's no voices in video games. There were no voices in video games, by the way. There was Doom, there was uh, Castlevania, there was Wolfenstein. There were no voices really in games. And she goes, well, there's about to be with this game called Duke Nukem. And I laughed. Didn't you laugh the first time you heard Duke Nukem? Yeah. All right. So, uh, boom, I get to audition for it. I don't think anybody else did. George Broussard from 3D Realms was on the phone and said, you got the part. I get it right away. And, and I'm like, okay, cool. This is fun. Uh, I'm now a video game voice actor, so the first game I did was Duke Nukem 3D. The second game was Candyland Adventure. <laughs> so I went from radio into uh, uh, video game acting just by uh, coincidence of a uh, casting director who happens to live in San Diego and 
God bless her, she's uh, got me many jobs over the years. And that's my story, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I have cassettes and cassettes and cassettes and cassettes of me when I was little doing Radio TIA. And where we picked, wait, where you picked the songs and not the DJ, but the person listening to it was also the DJ. So I got to pick all the songs and I would just record them from the TV with my karaoke machine. Um, so that didn't give me my start though, that's just something goofy I did. So when I was in college, so I come from a very, very small town. I graduated high school with 20 people. That gives you an idea. Everybody's a farmer, except for me. Um, <laughs> and I always love cartoons. I was an art major in college because I wanted to do creative things but not talk to anybody, um, which I didn't. And uh, then I joined the Walt Disney World College program, which I highly suggest if you're an introvert <laughs> to go do that. And there I got to see six foot tall men walking around with goofy backpacks, and they didn't care, they just loved goofy. And I thought that was amazing that you could do that, you could make a life of it. So instead of working on Splash Mountain, I wanted to be in Splash Mountain. So uh, I decided, okay then, I'm going to change my major. So whenever I got back to Texas, I double majored in theater, communication, and speech. And um, that put me on stage, that put me facing my fears, and instead of being a scared little girl in a room just drawing, I was on stage and I was getting lead roles and plays and having to face the most terrifying thing ever, people. And um, so in time, I was like, okay, I did that. I, I, I faced my fears, awesome. Well, I wanna work in cartoons. Where's the closest cartoon place to me? Funimation, two hours away. Okay, I'm gonna work there. So, uh, and that's exactly what I said. So one thing led to another, and by meeting the right people and asking the right questions, I was blessed to be able to audition, and that's where I've been ever since. So if you're ever scared to go for something, you should totally rock it anyway, even though you're scared, because it may work out for you. Because it did for me, and uh, yeah, I'm very, very thankful. <laughs> so that's my story. Listen, we are over time, so we gotta wrap this up. Uh, by decree of the king, uh, this panel has ended. Thank you all very much. Everybody on the panel, thank you guys very much.